Welcome back, America. I'm Hugh Hewitt. Pleased to welcome back to the program former President Donald Trump. Mr. President, welcome. Good to have you back. Good morning. I want to begin on a light subject. We're approaching the 50th anniversary of the Battle of the Sexes where Bobby Riggs and Billie Jean King played each other. Remember that? September of 1973, Mr. President? I do. I do. Were you pulling for Bobby or were you pulling for Billie Jean at that time? Well, I just was pulling for good entertainment that it was. You know, he beat uh, Margaret Court Smith, who may have been the greatest woman player of all time, and he beat her. And uh, I don't know that she knew she was playing in a match of such importance, but it became a very big deal. And then uh, she challenged him, and she won, and she won conclusively. I watched that night. She you know, won. The reason I bring up, 90 million people watched that. 90 million right. people. And the only thing I think that might draw an audience that even approaches that would be if you were to sit down with the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, they don't like you much. Would you do that for the ratings? Well, I don't know that they don't like me. I said uh, that I don't think they're very appropriate what they're saying, what they're doing. And I didn't like the way she dealt with the queen. I became very friendly with the queen. She was an incredible woman at 95. She was so sharp. She was a hundred percent. When you watch Biden, you say, this is a different planet. But uh, they treated her with great disrespect, and I didn't like it. And uh, I didn't like the idea that they were getting U.S. security when they came over here. Now, I, I think it's uh, it's not a good situation going on with uh, the two of them. But I didn't know that they don't like me. Somebody mentioned it might be so possible. They wouldn't be the only ones. But, I mean, that would get ratings, wouldn't it? Oh, if you want to set it up, let's set it up. Let's, right. let's go do something. I'll, I'll, I'd love to debate her. I would uh love it. I All right, now let's get so serious. What, I do, disagree so much with what they're doing. Do you think the Democratic prosecutors are indicting you in again and again in order to nominate you as the Republican or in order to beat you and keep you off the ticket? Only to get me out. They don't want me running. They uh, only, only fools say that. You know, what's happened is because of the fact that the polls have gone the opposite way, the American public sees it. Scam. It's just like you know, Russia, 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 and the fake dossier, all the different scams they've had, the 51 intelligence agents, and I could go all day long. And the American public is tired of it, and they see it's a scam. And only fools or bad people or people that are on the other side, I guess, that are you know smart with their disinformation, which are, you know, a lot of them, they don't want to run against me. I'm leading Biden in all the polls. I'm leading uh, the Republicans, as you know, better than anybody, because I think you were originally maybe thinking about being a sanctimonious guy. But uh, I'm leading him by 50 points now, by a lot. We're leading other candidates by a lot more than that. They're down to nothing. Ada Hutchinson, Christie, all these guys are down to almost nothing. And uh, so we're leading them and we're leading Biden. And uh, they don't want me to run. And, uh, you know, and you'll absolutely take it back because everyone's so afraid to say it. But I did better in the second election than I did in the first. I got millions more votes. And the last one they want to run against is me. And they know it. So now, do you turns, expect, do do you they expect say, oh, well, we really want to run against Trump. Well, you know what we really want to do, because they're a party of disinformation. You know, they actually say, oh, their economy's good. Yesterday, I heard them say we've created a strong border. They say it a million times. What they do is they say it a million times, like just over and over. We have a strong border. And people start to believe it. But yesterday I actually heard them say we have a strong border. And I said, that is disgraceful. Like the weakest border in history of any country. Now, President Trump, we saw yesterday Joe Klein, Time Magazine columnist forever, a liberal, saying Joe Biden's too old. His eyes are almost closed. Do you think the president, President Biden, is going to be their nominee in 2024, or is he simply too old to run again? Look, uh, anything's possible. But when I watch, his body is shot and his mind is worse. And yet he seems to want to do it. And I hope he does it. But he seems to want to do it. But you take a look at him and he's not running government. People that are surrounding him who are very smart fascists and communists. Those are the people running our country. Uh, now, when you when you say he might not be there, if you were to run against Gavin Newsom or Kamala Harris or Jared Polis or Josh Shapiro, could you beat them all as well? Or can you just beat President Biden? 
I think I'd beat anybody. We had the greatest economy in history. We did a phenomenal job in everything. I rebuilt the military. We knocked out ISIS. Everybody said, you're not going to beat ISIS. I did it in four weeks. You know, we have great generals. We have great, great people, but not the ones on television, not the ones who handled uh, Afghanistan, the greatest embarrassment in the history of our country, in my opinion, probably in your opinion, too. And probably the thing that really got Putin, gave him that little extra energy, because he was never going into Ukraine with me, ever. And we have a situation going on now, and I'm just watching and reading about what's happening with uh, Kim Jong-un of North Korea. And we have a situation that's a very dire situation where North Korea is getting involved now with Putin and weapons. And that's a very, very bad, you know, the weapons he has primarily has is nuclear weapons. And it's a very, very bad thing that's happening. And it would have now, never happened with me. I I, I, I've been talking a lot about this book, Cobble, by uh, Jerry Dunleavy and yes. James Hassan. Uh, the Biden people like to blame you for the disaster in Afghanistan. They said you signed the Doha Accords, or you, you sent Mike Pompeo to sign the Doha Accords, and that their hands were bound. They had to get out. Is that true? And they're fools and they're liars. So we have a step-by-step agreement. They didn't fulfill certain steps, and therefore we knocked the hell out of them. We didn't lose a soldier in 18 months. We had a great agreement, but they had to live up to it. And whenever they would miss a step, they were under default. And we would either hit them very hard, do something, but they were 100%. They were, Abdul is his name. Abdul headed it. He still heads the Taliban. They had total respect for us. They didn't kill a soldier in 18 months. You know, they were knocking them off left and right during the Obama administration with the snipers. Uh, They were just knocking them off left and right. And I had a conversation with Abdul, and it was a very serious, very tough conversation. After that conversation, we didn't lose one soldier in 18 months. And Biden actually admitted that. His people went crazy when he did, but that's okay. (laughs) One of the only times he told the truth. But we didn't lose a soldier. They had total respect for us. And we were going to get out, but we're going to get out with dignity and strength. But we're also keeping the monster Air Force base that cost billions and billions of dollars to build many years before. The longest runways, most powerful runways in the world. And we weren't keeping it for Afghanistan. We were keeping it because it's an hour away from where China makes their nuclear weapons. It's called Bagram. And Bagram, they gave it up. They gave it up. And now China is occupying it. It's a disgrace. What this guy did, he doesn't have a clue. And you don't bring the soldiers out first. The first thing you learn is you don't take this. You take the soldiers out last. So we have people there, perhaps thousands of people, American people, but others that should have come out. We have uh, we've given eighty five billion dollars worth of the best military equipment in the world to the Taliban and to Afghanistan. And now they're one of, I don't know if you know this, they're one of the largest agents of selling military equipment anywhere in the world because they're selling the stuff we get because they don't need 777,000 rifles and they don't need 70,000 vehicles. Many of them are armed. 70,000 vehicles, many of them are armor plated, cost millions of dollars. So it's if, the, if, the most horrible if they, thing. and now if, the France say, oh, yeah, it's Trump's fault. Tell you who doesn't think it was Trump's fault is the the parents and the loved ones of the 13 soldiers that were killed so unnecessarily with that horrible evacuation that they did. They have no idea what they were doing. They were that was the gang that couldn't shoot straight. Do you look forward to debating the Afghanistan collapse with whomever their nominee is, whether it's President Biden, Vice President Harris, Governor Newsom? Do you, do you want to debate Afghanistan with them? Well, it was one of the worst decisions. I was the one that got it so we were getting out. We were getting out after being there for decades. We were getting out. Uh, It wasn't good for us. It was very bad for us. And, you know, it's interesting. We still pay them billions of dollars a year. We send them money that's like water. I don't don't get it. If we're going to send them money, then tell them to send us back the equipment that Biden left there. I said, I want every nail. I want every screw, every tank, every plane. I even want the hangers that they built. They're portable hangers, big canvas portable hangers. I want everything. And it was all coming out. And then this this terrible, terrible election took place. And our borders became open. And Afghanistan was just so horrible. I do believe it was the most embarrassing moment in the history of our country. So, Mr. Brent, how are you going to make that point? Including including inflation. 
including a bad economy and including inflation. And even that, they try and say, oh, inflation's wonderful. What, if, what about for the last three years where bacon is five times higher than it was uh, just a few years ago? But how are you going to make these points, Mr. President, if you're in trial? I think the first trial is scheduled for March. The Atlanta trial is going to be televised. It's going to be a mess. How are you going to be able to campaign and make these points if you're sitting behind a defendant's table in a courtroom? Well, we'll be asking for many dismissals of many of these fake cases. These are fake cases. These are cases that were brought by, uh, look, these cases were brought by Biden. These are campaign cases. Nobody's done it except in banana republics. These aren't cases. These are cases that were brought by my political opponent. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. The public gets it. That's why I'm beating him by so much. And it's why I'm beating every Republican by so much, among other things, to be honest, because we had a great we had a great run as president. We had the greatest economy ever. I rebuilt the military. I got the biggest tax cuts in history and we were going for more. We were energy independent. Think of it. Now we don't even know what we're doing with energy. Now we're going to all electric cars, but we don't have any electricity. We don't have the grid. Uh, over the weekend, California had brownouts and blackouts, and they want to go to electric cars. They can't take care of what they have now. And people want but, to drive for more than an hour. You know, But I do think, so- even if you get some of these dismissed, and I think some of these indictments will be dismissed if you get an interlocutory appeal, and I'm not sure. Number one, do you think you could get a fair trial in D.C. or in Atlanta? No, I can't. No. <laughs> so when no. is the transfer of trial motion going to be made in D.C.? They are political indictments. And even the ones like Atlanta, let's call them local, more local, they're all run out of the DOJ. Manhattan is run out of the DOJ. They actually took their top guy, put him in to run the Manhattan office, okay? What they've done is so corrupt. And nobody's ever seen. And we're asking for dismissals. We will be asking for virtually dismissals of most of it. And the public agrees with it. And the public agrees with me. These are this is a disgrace to our country. This is called election interference. If I weren't running or if I was in fourth place instead of being in first place by 50 points or more, 50 did you see over the weekend, 50 points, uh, if I were in third place or fifth place or something like some of these guys where they're at 1% and 2% and zero, uh, this wouldn't be happening. None of it. It's so if I'm beating Biden and it's only because I did what I did, what I did to Hillary, it shocked them. They said, we can never let this happen again. They cheated like dogs. So we got many more millions, as you know, millions and millions more votes the second time. I did much better the second time than I did the first and, that, and they know that better than anybody. And now uh, we're going to do it again and we're going to win. And if we don't win, our country is finished. I now, really Mr. President, I if if finished. Jack Smith and Fannie Willis and Alvin Bragg all get together and they come see you at Bedminster and Mar-a-Lago and they say to you, we will drop everything. It will all go away if you withdraw from the race in politics. Will you take that deal? I think they would do that. I think they'd do that right now. Uh, I would no interest. You know me well enough. No interest. Absolutely right. no interest. I think they make us- that deal right now. That's what it's all about. They want, this is interfering with an election. And all those fools that write that, oh, they really want Trump to win, they changed it, actually. So now they say they did it in order to keep me strong. They thought this was going to take me down. This, this was not going to keep me strong. This, was, this has never happened before where somebody got indicted and the polls went up by 20 percent or 25 percent or something. No, no. If they came to me and they would do that, they would make that deal in two seconds. And you have no interest in it. And you know what I have? I have no interest in it. These are corrupt people. These are fascists. These are Marxists. These are communists. These are sick people that are destroying our country. We have millions of people coming in. I'm in New York right now, and I just rode through the streets. I've never seen anything like it. uh, New York, I've never seen it looking like this. And you have... Thousands and thousands of people in plain sight that come from foreign countries that most people never even heard of. It's not just the countries that are joining us. It's foreign countries that many people have never even heard of. They're coming from all over Africa. They're coming from areas of the world that nobody can believe and how far it is away for them to get there. These cartels are making a fortune and they're destroying our country and we do nothing about it. Again, these are these are great points, Mr. President. But if you can't 
If you're in court arguing motions, if you're in court because the, not all the indictments have been dismissed, are you going to name your vice president early so that they can go out and campaign on your behalf? I mean, there's a nice long list of potential vice presidents. We've got you know, Nikki Haley, Tim Scott, Ramaswamy, Yunkin, Pompeo, Robert O'Brien, Senator Cotton, Congressman Gallagher. There are lots of people who would make a good vice presidential nominee. Will you pick one early so that they campaign when you're in court? No, I don't think so. I think I'll go through the process. And, you know, I don't know. You know this probably better than anybody, but there's never been a vice president that got a president elected. It just doesn't work that way. It sounds good, everything, but the president gets uh, himself elected. Uh, I don't know that these things even go to court because uh, everybody, if you look at the legal scholars, the real legal scholars, the ones that aren't politicians, they're the real legal they say these cases are all nonsense. Like the records case, I come under the Presidential Records Act. I'm allowed to do it. Biden's not allowed to do it because he wasn't president. It's a special act that was passed in great detail in 1977, in tremendous detail. It tells you everything you're allowed to do, and it's not criminal. It has nothing to do with a criminal. It's not a criminal act. They don't even like to mention it. Because I come under the Presidential Records Act. Biden doesn't come under that act because it didn't pertain to him because he was vice president and a senator. And the boxes he have, he has are loaded up, loaded up with material that's the, the most classified material you can have. And even Senator can't believe he took all that stuff out. Well, even if you're successful on that motion, Mr. Brennan. And by the way, neither can a vice president. Right. I agree. But even if you are successful on the motion to dismiss on the documents, there's still the obstruction charge. I always think that's the most dangerous charge going. Did you direct anyone to move the boxes after the subpoena issued? Now, let me tell you about the obstruction charges. Same thing as they did with Russia, Russia, Russia. They create a fake case. This is, all this is, is Russia, Russia, Russia all over again. I got, you know, many of them and I've won every time. This is the great thing that they do. Uh, if they would set their mind to running the country like they cheat, they'd actually do a good job. But they do the worst job because their policies are so bad and everything else. If you look at what they do is to create a fake crime like the fake dossier. It was all fake. Everything was fake. I had the embarrassment of the things that were said. And then it turned out to be fake. And the FBI was willing to pay a million dollars if the guy would confirm it. And he wouldn't confirm it. He couldn't. So they, they create a fake crime, and then you fight that crime, and you fight it hard. And you fight it legit, but you fight it. You have no choice. These guys like Adam Schiff get on television with his smug, stupid face, and he makes it sound like Russia, Russia, Russia. You fight it really hard, and you fight it effectively. And then they say, he obstructed justice. So they create a fake crime. They're doing it. That's what they're doing again. They created all this fake stuff. They put this prosecutor that's been overturned all the time because of his aggression. He's a, I call him deranged Jack Smith. That's what he is. He's deranged. Look at his record. Look at what he did with Bob McDonald. Look at his record. What happened to him? He's been overturned by the United States Supreme Court unanimously, etc. He was in charge of the lowest learner. You cannot be a fan of the lowest learner case. He was in charge of the lower, lowest learner IRS case. And one of the greatest embarrassments in the history of our country, because he goes too far. What happens, and because, he's, because he is really, I believe, there's something wrong with him, okay? I believe he's sick. But l let me just tell you, they create a fake case, and then they say, he obstructed, he obstructed. So they no longer have any case. They say, in fighting it, he was so tough that he obstructed. So, so, but did you did you direct anyone to move the boxes, Mr. President? Did you tell anyone to move the boxes? I don't talk about anything. You know why? Because I'm allowed to do whatever I want. I come under the Presidential Records Act. I'm not telling you. You know, every time I talk to you, oh, I have a breaking story. You don't have any story. I come under the Presidential Records Act. I'm allowed to do everything I did. What what is not the case is Biden. Biden didn't come under because he was the vice president. And by the way, Mike Pence didn't come under, and he had very serious uh, classified documents, and he didn't come under, and nobody seems to be bothered by that. But I am totally protected by the Presidential Records Act. And All right, so uh, I, you've got you know, a four-ring circus going here. But we're going to be asking 
for dismissals of these politically motivated cases. Now, let me ask you one. The J6 committee just announced recently that they have destroyed and deleted all evidence that they created, they created and had. All of the evidence, all of their documents, everything has been deleted. And the reason it was deleted is that much of that information was unbelievably bad for uh, crazy Nancy Pelosi and others. Very, very bad for the mayor of Washington, D.C. So they deleted everything and they destroyed everything. If, if so they not, deleted exculpatory evidence, that will help your cases. But I, I'd like to go no, back to the question of deleted exculpatory. They ex, they deleted everything. There is no evidence. So now well, when the when the police chief, who was great, and then you had one who died and he was great. He gave this horrible uh, testimony, horrible for her, for Nancy Pelosi that it was her responsibility. She did a very bad job at the Capitol. They deleted all of that stuff. It's gone. And so that, that's criminal. Those people should be held in criminal contempt. And you could have that one as an exclusive. The people in J6, the J6 Unselect Committee, as I call it, those people on charge, they were all Democrats and two Republicans that were thrown out of the party. Cheney and Kinzinger, they were thrown out of the party, crying Adam Kinzinger. Every time he got on television, he cried. This guy is a basket case also. But let me just tell you, they deleted and destroyed all of the evidence, all of the material they had, so that we would have gone in and learned all about why they did this, and, and they didn't want it. And it was horrible for Nancy Pelosi. You know, Mr. President, you bring up Adam Kinzinger. The last time you were on the show, you said that you would be entitled, if you were reelected, to a revenge tour, but you wouldn't go on it. When I hear you bring up Adam again, are you still of that opinion? You would not look backwards. You would only look forwards if you were reelected. I only look for the truth. And when I find the truth, I think the people have to know the truth, because these people have maligned me for seven years. They've been maligning me and libeling me and creating false stuff. I mean, look at the 51 uh, intelligence agents where they got them to say something that they knew on their laptop from hell, where they said it was Russia disinformation. And they all knew it wasn't Russia disinformation, every one of them. They all lied. And there's a lot of suits going on. You know, we're suing different things. It's too bad uh, uh, they weren't sued by the Justice Department because that's where the suits should have been. But would you use the power of the presidency to go after the the people? Would you use the power of the presidency? Would you use the power of the presidency to go after the people who maligned you? We want to find the truth more than anything else. Now, here's the one thing. We've pretty much found the truth. There was cheating on massive cheating on the election. We've pretty much found the truth. The election that sounds like a yes, Mr. President. You will go after him. That sounds like a yes. You would go after him. I want to find the truth. And I think I'm entitled to find the truth. Because they came after me with lies. They came after me with the fake dossier. They came after me with 18 angry Democrats. And I have great respect for one of the Because one of those 18 said we cannot, he didn't do anything wrong. And they found no collusion. But they would have said it. I mean, you know, Weissman and these other guys would have said it. There was, I, you know what I say? I said I had an angel in there. Because they had 18 guys that were willing to lie. But they had one that wasn't, and one the one that wasn't had some power. And now, if you get know, these dismissals, but, Mr. President, I, I and great respect for that particular man because he's a Democrat. Think of it: I had eighteen radical left Democrats, and they were making up stories. And then when that didn't pan out, they tried to say obstruction, but that didn't work either. And that's what they do, you know. That's their game plan. They make up a story. I saw uh, I saw a shifty shift last night on television making up another yarn, same way. And then when you fight the yarn, they accuse you of obstruction. You've obstructed. Uh, no, but it doesn't work so easy. If, you're well, if you get some things dismissed, they will appeal. And if, if you lose your motions to transfer or dismiss, you will get an appeal. Eventually, something's going to go to the Supreme Court. Have you already retained a Supreme Court advocate? Because that's different from criminal lawyers. You've got to get there are very few people who know how to argue before the court. Do you know who will argue your appeals for you that I, thus I far? I have some great people, but I hope it doesn't even get there. This thing is a scam. This is a scam. This is election interference. 
And if I was, and I say it to everybody that listens, somebody actually told this to me today. I was talking to somebody. They said, you know, if you didn't run, this would never happen. I said, that's right. And to all those stupid people that say they want to run against me, those are the, well, they're actually in some cases stupid. And in some cases, they're smart. I read where Mark Thiessen said, well, they really want to run against Donald Trump. They don't want to run against me. He's a nice guy. He's a smart guy. But they don't want to run against me. The one person they don't, because they said the same thing with Hillary. How did that work out? Not too good. And now they're saying it, Joe Biden, because Joe Biden is way, I mean, he is, he is dying. I don't personally, in the ratings, I, I don't personally see him running. I mean, I can't imagine it, but I hope he does. Now, I, I, I know that you are skipping the next debate at the Reagan Library, but on Sunday, Chris Christie said there's a third one. The RNC has not confirmed this. They won't confirm it. A third one is scheduled for Tuscaloosa, Alabama in October. Are you going to go to that if that's in fact true? Well, I won Alabama in the highest number anybody has ever won, which is very interesting because I set a record in Alabama. I set a record in South Carolina, a great governor in South Carolina, by the way, set a record in South Carolina. But right next door in Georgia, I lost by a whisker, by just a whisker. One of the top people in Alabama said, you don't win Alabama by 45 points or whatever it is I won. And then win South Carolina in a record. Nobody's ever gotten that many votes. And then you lose Georgia by just a couple of votes. It doesn't work that way. But would you go to the Alabama debate if it is in Alabama? I'll, I'll make that decision. I would love to go to anything involved with Alabama. But now, Senator Tuberville is he's an ally of yours. Governor DeSantis has sided with Senator Tuberville on holding up all the promotions. Nikki Haley has criticized him. What do you think of Senator T- Tuberville's boycott of 300 well, colonels and captains? Let me tell you, Senator Tuberville, Tommy Tuberville, not Tuberville, but it's uh, he is a great man. He's a great senator. Uh, he is doing his thing right now. And he has the courage to at least speak up for his convictions. Uh, people agree and don't agree, but that's not it. He's got the guts to do what he wants to do, what he thinks is good. And he loves the people of this country and the people of Alabama. And he's in there fighting, which is unfortunately not true for a lot of other Republicans. Now, Mr. President, one of the, cri- one of the support, things that the you run into. You have to learn to fight stronger and harder and smarter. Well, a lot of people wonder, if you were to be reelected, would people go to work for you? Could you find an attorney general? Could you get back Pompeo? Would O'Brien come back? Would you get your A team back and add to it? Yeah, I, in two minutes, I would have, have, you know, that's the other thing. I have so many lawyers that want to work for me. They love this case. And it makes sense. Forget about money. They get paid. But you become famous on this stuff. And it's not even tough. It's such a, it's such a con. I have a great staff of people. They always say about my lawyers, really? What have I lost? Not much. And the stuff I've lost, I get turned around. I'll turn everything around. But everybody wants to talk for me. They want to come into the administration. People that I see being not critical, but people that I see on television when they say, no, I wouldn't do that. And they're talking to me two days later about trying to come into the administration. Huh. If everything else. It's, it's all... A very strange thing. But Tommy Tuberville is a strong man who's done a fantastic job. You won in Alabama, and they love him in Alabama. All right, I want to go back to your lawyers because I am genuinely confused. Who is your Johnny Cochran? I mean, you've got Laurel. you got you got lawyers everywhere. Which one is, is the grand strategist? Who's running well, the ship? I have different lawyers for different things. Don't forget, I'm being sued by so many different Democrats. It's all Democrat uh, done. Everything. The Manhattan DA case, that's the Democrats. They actually had Hillary Clinton's lawyer from Paul Weiss, a Democrat firm. He represents her come out and go into the Manhattan DA's office and become the prosecutor on that case. OK, nobody has ever seen anything like it. So Hillary Clinton's lawyer left the Democrat firm. One of the I think the most important firm, Paul Weiss, left the Democrat firm and went into the Manhattan DA's office. I believe for no salary in order to get Donald Trump and prosecute Donald Trump. And it's so egregious that they wouldn't do what he, what he wanted to do. It was so crazy what he wanted to do. It was vicious. So the DA's office wouldn't do it. Okay. And the most amazing thing, 
he then quit in a hug. And he went out and during the case, he wrote a book, which is illegal. During the grand jury, he wrote a book, which is illegal. He published a book. And he was the the, you're, you're talking about after Cyrus Vance admonished. retired. And, and I get that. But my, my question yeah. is, Mr. President, if you any of these things get to trial, if any of these things get to trial, will you testify in well, your have, own defense? I have a lot of good lawyers, but I have different lawyers. You know how many cases they're suing me on? This is election interference. They want to make it so busy, that, and they want to also cost me a lot of money, so I can't take it. Joe you know, Biden is the most corrupt, most incompetent president in the history of the United States. They want me to give my money to lawyers, but I have many lawyers. They're all doing a nice job. And we'll see how it all turns. Uh, who is first among uh, equals, Mr. Forget, President? This is who, all. This is it, all election interference. I, I hear you, but le, uh, 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 lawyers often disagree. Who is your top dog lawyer? Who speaks for Donald uh, Trump? Uh, with different cases, but I would say Todd Blanche, highly respected guy, respected by everybody, is uh, right now doing in there doing a very, very good job. Doing a very so. If you have job. to go to trial, will you testify in your own defense? Oh, yes, absolutely. You'll well, take well, that the stand. I that, I would, uh, that I look forward to, because that's just like Russia, Russia, Russia. That's all the fake information from Russia, Russia, Russia. Remember when the dossier came out and everyone said, oh, that's so terrible, that's so terrible. And then it turned out to be it was a political report put out by Hillary Clinton and the DNC. They paid millions for it. They gave it to Christopher Steele. They paid millions and millions of dollars for it. And it was all fake. No, I think that obstruction no, charge is going to get to trial, Mr. Trial. President. I, I think that. Ob- OK, if you do and they ask you on on the stand, did you order anyone to move boxes? How will you answer? I'm not answering that question for you, but I'm totally covered under the law. If OK, you read the Presidential Records Act. Just read it. You take a look at it. I'm totally covered under the law. It's a civil act. It's civil. Now, Biden had no civil act. The things he did are criminal, but the, he doesn't have a deranged person on his case. You know, they gave me deranged Jack Smith. He's got a man who's a you know normal person. <laughs> what can I tell you? Okay, and, let me uh, turn to international events. Do you know that the, he has 20 times the number of boxes that I have? Yeah, I, I want to turn to international events. You know Today, this, there, you know there's this. Biden, listen to me for a second. Do you know that Biden has 20 times the number of boxes that I have? Do you know that he has classified information from when he was a senator? That means he stole it out of a skiff. Do you know that Democrat senators said if he did that, he's guilty of a very serious crime? I do, and but I want said, Robert Hur to come up you know and talk as much as Jack Smith. In Chinatown? I, did you know that he sent boxes into Chinatown? Yeah, at and the Biden's. Boxes. I want to hear from Robert Hur. We have not heard from Robert Hur. Yeah. Now, tell me, though, I about G. Is, uh, going to be a little bit like uh, deranged Jack Smith, because you have to understand, Joe Biden does not come under the presidential record check. Correct. As vice president. president. He does he not. Vice president. Now, Mr. That's president, right. let's go to Xi Jinping in China. There's a story today that he was rebuked by the elders of China at their annual summer gathering. Do you believe he's in any danger of losing his his dictatorship? No, I know very well he's in no danger whatsoever. The people that suggested it will probably be executed within the next 24 hours. All right. Vivek likes to say he will get Putin to leave Xi behind. What do you make of Vivek saying that? It would have never happened. I'll tell you this. Ukraine is so sad every time I turn it on. That was a war that I, I knew it was the apple of Putin's eye. He would have never done it if the election weren't rigged, our election. It was rigged and stolen. If that election wasn't rigged, if I were president, you would right now have millions of people living that were dead. You would have cities that would be flourishing and they'd be up and they'd be in Ukraine. Those beautiful gold and everything else that are uh, to have been reduced to rubble. Like, I mean, take a look at these cities. It was like demolition crews just went through. There's not a building standing. And then they say two people were injured. I'll tell you the biggest surprise the numbers that they tell you how many people were killed because the numbers are staggering. staggering. So, but, but when Vivek says he can talk Putin out of this and break the alliance between Putin and Xi, what does Donald Trump think about that? Well, I can do that very easily. And I did that. 
you know, for four years, they were not close with me. And I was close to both of them. And then when COVID came in, I said, that's, that's, that's a ship too far as far as uh, she is concerned. A great relationship with them. And they're, they're, they're threatening Taiwan. Would you I, defend Taiwan great, if you're president I again? Relationships. I had great relationships with everyone. You don't have to worry about Taiwan. If I'm president, Taiwan will never happen. So you, but if China it, will never go up to Taiwan if I'm president, not if they, even a chance. If they did, would you take up arms against them? Force? They they will not do it. Zero chance. And, and Russia would have never gone in Ukraine. Zero chance. There are that, other that, things you can do without going into a nuclear holocaust. There are other that, things you can do. China you've been generous with your time. I want to do a lightning round, Mr. President. Five quick questions. No, all right. These are fun questions. Because, because I like giving long answers. All right. Well, let's get this answers. one is not a lot. Who's going to be in the Super Bowl this year? I never like lightning rounds because one word answer is not appropriate for about 95 percent of the questions. Well, this one. But, and, and who do you think is going to be in the Super Bowl? Well, Kansas City is is really good. I think Kansas City is great. Jets and Giants are looking good pretty good. I think uh, they maybe have a little bit of a chance. They have. Uh, they work hard. They've been working hard for a long time. But, you know, Kansas City's just really a great team with a great quarterback and a great coach. He's a fantastic coach. So and if the be- Super Bowl comes along and Joe Biden refuses to do the halftime interview, because I don't think he's doing any interviews at all. I don't think he can. He Will you step it. in? Mentally shot. Yeah, but would you step in if he said no? Would you do he the halftime interview? Let me tell you, if you had him on this call and you're grilling me and grilling, oh yeah, yeah, here we go with you, and you go, he would, he wouldn't be able to answer the first question, like, you know, where are you now? He he doesn't even know where he is. So if he won't do the Super Bowl interview, would you step in and say, I'll do the Super Bowl interview? Sure, I'd do the Super Bowl interview. I would. I love. I love doing them. Actually, they. they I know you do, and you've been. You have not been out there, and I'm afraid you're not. Your lawyers aren't letting you campaign. Are they saying you can't go on shows and you can't campaign? Well, no, they let me do your show. I didn't. I didn't ask them if I should do your show. I, you know, I don't ask people. You have to understand. I'm in the middle of a very successful campaign. I'm leading the Republicans by. I saw one poll yesterday, sixty-two points. I'm leading them. Well, yeah, yeah, last night, Chris Christie told Anderson Cooper. I, I, I say it again. What? Did, last night on Anderson Cooper, Chris Christie said in New Hampshire, you've only got thirty-four percent, and he's got fourteen percent. Two thirds of New Hampshire is against you. What do you say to that? Look, he's a slob. I call him sloppy Chris. He left the governorship of New Jersey with an eight percent approval rating. He couldn't run for dog catcher uh, in, in New Hampshire. I have thirty-eight points. It's right in front of me. The big poll. Uh, it's right in front of me. No, he lies. He tells lies. So are you going to do, are you afraid of the debate? Be- yeah, I mean, you're winning. You've got this huge lead. You've got this huge lead, but are you afraid of the debates because he's on the stage and will come after you? I couldn't care less. I, I think he's not a very smart person. I think he's a very disturbed person. He and uh, uh, maybe deranged Jack Smith should get together for dinner. Uh, I think Chris is a very disturbed person. Uh, I know him very well. He went through a ter- terrible scandal where he left everybody out to dry. We call Bridgegate that he doesn't like to talk about, but that was a hell of a scandal. And it was a terrible thing he did and a super thing he did. Chris was a lousy governor. He left with 8% approval. How do you go run for president when you were approved by 8%? If he ran in New Jersey right now, he wouldn't even be able to get into a primary. So, you know, now he wants to be president. No, he's gone because I didn't give him a job. I didn't want to give him a job. Why? Because I didn't trust him. I had great people. You know, we read about certain people, but I had great people. I rebuilt the military. I got the biggest tax cuts ever. We were energy independent, very soon going to be energy dominant. We did things that no president's ever been able to do. Two last questions, Mr. President. The UFO issue is back. The Tennessee congressman wants it. What did you learn about UFOs when you were in the Oval? Do you believe in them? <laughs> That's a very interesting question. I'll tell you. It's a, you have believers of, in that like you wouldn't believe, and they're very solid people. And then you have people that don't believe. And I really more focused on Russia, and I focused on China, and I focused on North Korea. 
Uh, you have people, though. I I will tell you, I I was uh, I interviewed a couple of people from the Air Force, and these guys were central casting perfect guys with their crew cuts, and they walked in, they were handsome as allies. And what do you think? And they believe it. I mean, they believe it. They said they saw it. And so you got briefed on UFOs. You got briefed on them. What? You when you were president, they briefed you on UFOs. I was briefed. Yeah, I was briefed. So do you uh, believe in I, them? I have. I always have an open mind, but you know what? I focused on things like China and things like, you know, unfortunately, I had to also focus on, on garbage. Beans like, uh, like uh, Adam Schiff, Shifty Schiff, and Hillary Clinton and other people that were always trying to take me down. So I did more than almost any president, maybe more than any president. I did Space Force. I did all this stuff. I rebuilt our military. All this stuff, despite the fact that I had the Democrats going after me all the time. I mean, I was fighting. I was. I had two jobs. One was running a great country, and I did that. And the other was survival. And okay, let, let's close that on money. that. Let's close on survival. the obstruction issue, Mr. President, because I've read all the indictments, and I think the one that's the killer indictment is the obstruction charge. And it comes back to, even though the Presidential Records Act covers you, <laughs> If you had a subpoena and you didn't I listen to it. I, I know you always like to do the little trick questions so you get, but there is no soundbite here. There is no obstruction. These are all fake crimes. And what they do is they create a fake crime. I hate to be repetitive. What they do is they create a fake crime like Russia, 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 which was totally exonerate. All these things were exonerated. I want all of this stuff. You know, it's voluminous, but I want it. They create a fake crime, and then if you fight them, it's like on the election. Conspiracy theorist. Oh, he's a conspiracy theorist. So they cheat on the election. They cheat like dogs on the election. And then people are afraid to talk up about it because they say they're conspiracy theorists. And what they're doing to people now and to people's rights in this country and giving people sentences that nobody ever heard about, they don't go after Antifa where they killed people. They took over Seattle. They took over... Uh, Minnesota. They took over the state, but they took over Minneapolis. They practically burned the place down and nothing happens. What they're doing to people is a horrible thing. Well, they about those people, are you worried that any of them are going to flip on you? I'm not worried about anything. If I worried, I'd be sitting in a corner someplace and saying, mommy, take me home. I don't worry about it. <laughs> hey, Mr. Brett, last question. Are you going to do any of the debates? I may. I'll certainly do the debate against a Democrat, whoever that may be. That I feel you have an obligation to do. But you know, you but own the debates, debates in 2016. You know, the when you have a 50, 60, even a 70 point lead, and, and you're fighting a guy like uh, Asa Hutchinson, you know, a real lightweight, or you're fighting a Chris Christie who's, who's, you know, he's just a crazed lunatic. He's nothing. And by the way, he's not doing well in the polls. I just saw a poll where he was at less than 2%. So you're fighting Chris Christie. You're fighting these other guys. Now, I will say Vivek was very nice. I mean, he said, I'm the greatest president in a long time. Uh, Trump is the greatest president we've had in a generation and more. So, you know, it's hard for me to be angry at him. I'm disappointed in Mike Pence because I took Mike from the garbage heap. He was going to lose. You know, he was running for governor of re of reelection. He was running for governor again to continue his term. Uh, and he was he was absolutely you know he was down by ten or fifteen points, and I came along and took him off that he was going to lose that that race, and I treated him good, and I actually had a very good relationship until the end. And so you're not worried about Governor DeSantis you know, or Nikki Mike, Haley? You're you're not. You, no, wait a I, minute, Mike is doing very poorly because people disagree with what he's done. It's very simple; they disagree with what he's done. Uh, no, Nikki's not doing very well in the polls. I mean, you know, she's uh, been disappointing, I think, as a campaigner. Governor DeSantis says he's going to win Iowa. Are you worried about him? Look, look, he's a guy that if I didn't endorse him, he would have been doing something else right now. He was dead. Uh, he's a very disloyal guy. The people have found that out. When I endorsed him, he went from last place. He was dead. He was down by 30 or 40 points to uh, the Secretary of Agriculture. His name is Adam Putnam in Florida. And Putnam had $30 million and Ron had nothing. And I endorsed him. And when I endorsed him, he became a rocket ship. He became, I don't like to use the word, he became a nuclear weapon. And he went up and he won. 
got it easy. And then I got him past Fulham, who is, you know, a, a crackhead, unfortunately, but nobody knew at the time he was a, he was a star. You were saying he may be the Democrats next choice to be president. I mean, he and Stacey his people in the Democrat party and he had a run against him. Nobody knew his problems then. And he was getting killed on that one. And I came in, did three rallies for him and I, I won that one for him too. And then I helped when they were stealing all the votes. I brought in the FBI and I brought in the U S attorney and I got that stopped. Otherwise him and Rick Scott would have lost their election. They were, well, here's what I don't understand. I don't understand in 2016, you dominated all the presidential debates, all of them. But now you won't do them. Why? I mean, you. I just see it as free media. I love you, debating. Okay, ready? I never yeah. debated professionally. My first debate profession. My first question was the answer was uh, only Rosie O'Donnell. I guess that was a good answer. Is it? You know, it was a good answer. But that was my first. That was my first answer. But I like to debate. I think debating is very important. But when you have a fifty, sixty point lead, a seventy point lead. I mean, I'm beating these people. Why should I let? Uh, Asa Hutchinson, who's a nasty guy, uh, terrible governor, terrible personality. Why should I? He's at zero. Okay. He's actually just polled. I just saw a poll. He's at zero. Why should he have the power to ask me a really nasty question? I mean, there are well, if they get down to five people, you know if they, well, if they get down to the governor DeSantis, Vivek, Nikki Haley, Tim Scott, would you do it then? Because again, I've been four feet from you. I've seen you how you work the debate stage. Can you turn down a five person debate? And I mean, they must be like a magnet to you. I want to debate. I do. I love to debate. I think, it's, I guess it's a strength because I, you know, I did very well in the debates. Everyone else says I did great in debates. I like to debate, debate. And I have the issues on my side. I built the greatest economy ever. I, built, I rebuilt our military. We didn't have Ukraine. That would have never happened. Uh, Taiwan would never be talked about right now. That's going to happen eventually. What, I'll tell you what's going to happen is World War III is going to happen because this man doesn't have a clue. He's grossly incompetent. And he is saying things that are so bad. And now when I see Russia and North Korea dealing, they're like best friends now. I was very good with North Korea. You know, I kept us from having a nuclear war with North Korea. I was very good. I got along great with him. It was an amazing thing. Nobody could believe it. Started off very rough. And within a short period of time, he said, let's meet. I want to meet this guy. He wouldn't meet Obama. Wouldn't meet him. And we're going to have a nuclear war. But I'll tell you, we're going to have a nuclear war because this incompetent president, corrupt, he's the most corrupt and incompetent president. It's a combination of both, not a good combination. This incompetent president is going to get us into a nuclear war. It's going to be yeah. called World War Three, And it's not army tanks going back and forth shooting each other. This is weaponry, the likes of which nobody has ever seen before. I have not asked you about Hunter Biden or about the Ukraine corruption of Hunter Biden or Romania or China. What do you make of that? Is he getting a fair, is he getting a sweetheart deal from the government? Well, it was one of the greatest deals ever made. I would consider him, he should write a book called The Art of the Deal. Huh? Uh, one of the greatest deals ever made, uh, certainly. But, uh, you know, that's their problem. You know, until he did the indictment thing, I left Biden a little bit alone. I left Hillary. You know, there was tremendous corruption. Her with 33,000 emails, deleting them, bleach bidding them, and breaking up the phones with hammers and everything. And, uh, but I sort of just out of respect for our government. But once they did the election interference at a level that nobody's ever seen, meaning indicting a popular, because I got more votes than any sitting president in this day, as you know. As you know, uh, I got, think of it, I got more votes than any sitting president in the history of our country. And he indicted me for, for absolute nothing, for nothing. And it's a very sad thing. So now the gloves are off and I can tell the truth. The truth is that Joe Biden is the most incompetent president we've ever had. He was dumb 25 years ago when Senator Kennedy said he's the dumbest person in the Senate. You know, I was very friendly with Senator Ted Kennedy. You know that. Yes. And because of Palm Beach and, you know, he was obvi obviously different persuasion in terms of view. But I asked him, I said, Who's the smartest person in the Senate? And we had a very good relationship, as I think even their family will admit. They won't be happy about it, but we got along great. 
And I said, who's the smartest? And he gave me an answer, which I won't tell you because I don't like this guy, but he's probably right. I said, who's the dumbest? He said, uh, probably Joe. This is 25 years ago. Probably Joe. I said, who's Joe? Joe who? Joe Biden. He said, he doesn't understand anything like about taxes. He doesn't understand anything about policy. He just doesn't understand. He's hale and hearty and well met, meaning he's got a nice smile. And uh, that was it. Uh, that was the last I ever spoke to him about it. But he, he was a dummy 25 years ago. He's going to get us into a nuclear war. And On that note, Mr. Nuclear, President, I've taken Trump's you much. Trump's been right about everything. You know, they have a hat. Trump's been right about everything. I think I've been right about everything. And you're and, confident uh, on these cases. You don't think you're going to be behind a uh, defendant table throughout the entire campaign, crippled and unable well, I mean, to campaign. You know, if I am, if I am, it's going to show what a fake deal it all is. It's all fake. It's all it's all just fake stuff. Do you want to televise? In order the, to interfere with the election. So I don't think they'll be covering anybody else. So in that way, it's good. Look. Right now, they're barely covering anybody else. They cover me. And it's always been that way. I don't know. Someday, been that way all my life. You'll have to explain that to me. You. Well, the, the judge in Atlanta said it would be televised. Do you welcome that? It's all right. Okay. I don't mind that. If it happens. But we're going for motions to dismiss. It should have never happened. You know, she's a person that got elected like Letitia James. That's a very interesting one. Because I built a great company with hundreds of millions of dollars of cash with billions and billions of dollars in value, more value than they thought. And they're very confused now because they, she got without knowing anything about me. She said very bad things about me. It turned out that it's all false. What she said. So which is the greatest danger to you as a case, which case worries you the most? Nothing worries me because I'll tell you what, this was election interference at the highest level. The Republicans are with me. Many Democrats are with me. Many Democrats, because of what they've done, nobody's ever seen this before, but because of what they've done, many Democrats will be voting for Trump. The black community is so different for me in the last, since that mugshot was taken, I don't know if you've seen the polls. My polls with the black community have gone up four and five times. Hispanic has been so good to me. Uh, the Hispanic community has been unbelievable. But since that mugshot, which should have never been taken, but since that mugshot was taken of, of a very popular president of the United States who did a look, even my worst critics said I did a great job. We had the strongest economy. We rebuilt the we rebuilt our military. Think of it. We were energy independent three years ago. We didn't need anybody. Now we're begging Venezuela for oil. Venezuela. Well, the biggest the biggest knock on your presidency is you kept Dr. Fauci. Why did you keep Dr. Fauci? No, no, no. Dr. Fauci was there. First of all, you're not allowed. He's civil service and you're not allowed to fire him. But I forget that because I don't, you know, I don't necessarily go by everything. But Dr. Fauci would tell me things and I wouldn't do them in many cases. But also... He wasn't a big player in my administration. Dr. Fauci became a big player in the administration of Biden. He's a very big player in Biden's administration. With him elevated, he could do anything. I didn't agree with Dr. Fauci. I'll give you an example, very important example. Uh, the masks, you know, he was a radical no masker. Then he became a super radical master. He wanted the people of China who were badly infected but in our country to China. And I said, nope, we can't do that. I'm not going to do that. We're not, we're not letting him in. I saved hundreds of thousands of lives by stopping China, by not allowing people from China who were heavily infected, especially in the Wuhan area. And I was the one that also said it came from the Wuhan lab, and I've never changed. And now they found out I was right. So but when Governor DeSantis says... Leave China, go to France, go to Italy, go to the United States. And I stopped them from going to the United States I, I, and saved hundreds of thousands. I know that because uh, I know O'Brien and Pottinger. But when Ron DeSantis says on the debate stage, you didn't fire Fauci and you shut down the country and that was a mistake. How will you respond? OK, you ready? It's so easy to respond. He shut viciously. He wouldn't let anybody come in. He shut down his beaches. He shut down the entire state. He tries. He has a selective memory. He shut down. Henry McMaster didn't shut down South Carolina. 
Uh, Christy Nome didn't shut down uh, South Dakota. Uh, he shut down Florida. It was tight as a drum. He was lines. He was vaccinating every. Now he talks about the vaccination, this and that. And let me tell you the other thing. I will send you after this conversation uh, five articles about how much he loves Dr. Fauci. I do what Dr. Fauci says. This is Ron DeSanctimonious. I do what Dr. Fauci says. That's what he says. And I've got the articles here, but he doesn't like to go back. What he does is he, he says, look, he also voted to decimate Social Security and change Medicare for the worse. He also voted a lot of bad things and a lot of stupid things with his recent legislature that are killing him right now. He's gone. In my opinion, he's gone. He's very low. And but when, when he mentions Dr. Fauci, I immediately hold up six articles that were uh, there talking about. I listened to Dr. Fauci, what Dr. Fauci said. He's a brilliant man. This is Ron DeSanctimoni is talking, but he shut down Florida. Remember, he shut down the beaches. He shut down the highways. He shut down Florida. Now, eventually he opened because the Republican governors tended to keep them open. But some Republican governors didn't shut him down, like Henry McMaster, like Christy Noem, like some others. And they didn't shut him down. And those are the ones that did a good job. Ron was not in that category. And by the way, just so you know, it sounds very negative. Third most in deaths from COVID, unfortunately, Florida. Florida was third worst in death. So right, Ron, right. and that's a, that's a horrible that's a horrible statistic. But that's the statistic that sort of counts. Ron was the third worst country in terms of third, first, third worst in terms of actual death from COVID. Ron so let, let's finish on this. Three. If you uh, are the nominee and Joe Biden doesn't run, who is the strongest Democrat that would give you the biggest race? I don't know. I, it's, it's not even a good question because anybody can come from anywhere. Uh, they say that. If they run against Kamala, it's going to be a real problem for the party. Uh, is she capable of running? I'll let you make that determination. But they say that she has to get it because otherwise the black community will be very angry. But the black community is already angry with Biden. They think he's incompetent. They're right. They get it. They get it. He's grossly incompetent. He should not be running our, our country. The guy can't. After he makes a fool out of himself making a speech, he turns around, he starts looking all over the place. How do you get off the stage? Where do I go? He walks in the wrong direction. This is a guy that's telling us to use all electric cars. This is a guy that's negotiating with Putin. They think he's an idiot. They think he's an incompetent. And we have him representing our country. Our country has never been so low before, ever. And now they did the worst thing of all. They've indicted. Think of it. They've indicted a former president of the United States with nothing. That's why my polls went up. If it was something, the polls wouldn't go up. And they've indicted him four times. And if they, oh, they'd love to find more. Although now I don't think they do want to find more, actually, because it's sort of, I think they're saying this is not working out so well. Well, I, I look forward to having you back as these progress, Mr. President. I've kept you for an hour and I appreciate the amount of time you've given me. Still the best interview in America. But are you going to go back out on the interview trail and do this again? Sure, I would. I would do it. I enjoy doing it. And I enjoy making the case for what we did. I had the strongest borders in the history of our country. No, very few people were coming in. We had almost no drugs. The drugs were down. You know what? Drugs now are coming into our country 10 times what they were just three years ago. 10 times, 12 times I heard this morning. They're flowing in. There's nobody. I was getting millions and millions of, of uh, drug, you know, finding equipment. You know, the best the best thing you can have is a certain type of dog, a German Shepherd. And a specific German Shepherd is better than spending a million dollars on a machine. It's a, it's much better. But we had the dogs all of we were stopping them. The cartels, they didn't like Trump. I can tell you that. Now the cartels are the richest people in the world. These guys are richer than the people you read about. Uh, these people, they're getting away with murder. China's getting away with murder. He's afraid. Look, China paid Biden off. They know everything. That's why he's so weak on China. He's so Do afraid of China. There's no reason to be afraid of China. We have a lot of, we have a lot of things on China where they can't do anything if you had a president that was 
even modestly capable. You don't even have to be capable. But he's afraid to attack China financially and otherwise because they know all the millions of dollars given and the stuff that they found in Congress, which is a lot, is peanuts compared to the fact. So he's okay. weak on China. He's weak on Ukraine because Ukraine took care of him and his family. So he's weak on Ukraine. And he can't be very tough. He can't reveal all this stuff. Are you going to be back on Twitter, Mr. President? Are you, is Elon going to talk you into going back on Twitter? Well, I have a good relationship with Elon. I disagree on all electric cars, so obviously can't like me too much. But, you know, I did an interview with your friend Tucker Carlson. And at last glance, it was at 270 million people. That's the biggest interview in history. Think of it by far. You know, the second biggest or the biggest for many years was Michael Jackson's interview with Oprah. And that's held the title for many years. We, we more than doubled it. OK, think of well, it. To, was- to get an audience like Bobby Riggs and Billie Jean King did, you, I think you're going to have to go with the Duchess of Sussex, Mr. President. I think it's a good idea. I think set that up. You can be the matchmaker, okay? I'll do that. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. Keep coming back, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.